Sierra Leone can roughly be translated as mountain range of lions, or even mountain lion. This is a story based on truth and dedicated to all who can connect. Mufasa used to be so happy. He had an amazing family and good friends too. He loved fishing with them and they'd go every day out to sea and every day he brought fish home and his wonderful wife would cook a delicious meal. He was so blessed and thankful to Allah for everything he had. Suddenly it had all changed. The boats from Europe had started fishing in the waters. These boats were bigger, faster, and their nets could haul in two hours what him and his friends could haul in two months put together. What chance did he have of feeding his family now? And what about his friends too? Well, they were all in the same boat, he thought. Ha ha. But it was no laughing matter. Why couldn't these strangers share? He didn't understand. He'd been told that his country's government had made a treaty with Europe's government. The boats were allowed to fish in his country's waters. But it wasn't all bad news. He and his friends were now allowed to go to Europe. He thought about it. He really had to go. He couldn't do much else. He could no longer feed his family. He was scared, but also sad to leave his home. But he'd see everyone again when he returned with riches from Europe, and they would be so proud of him. Europe was a nice place. The land was lush, and most of the people were friendly. Some weren't, but he'd soon learned the local language and some English too. He tried to join the fishermen, but he needed a license and he was told he wouldn't get one. The only thing he could do was sell. He needed a permit for that too, if he wanted to sell in the local markets. His friend had come over on the boat with him and he told him about a way to make some money and there was somewhere to live included. Well, that can't be too bad, can it? He thought, but it was. He would hardly call it a place to live. Rows upon rows of bunk beds, one after the other, and a permanent stench of sweaty bodies and foot odour. No fresh food in sight, no peace and no privacy. But it was a start, and perhaps, if he could work hard, he could soon make some money and go home. He was given some products to sell. Small wooden African animals. Some of the other guys had DVDs, some had beach wraps, some had sunglasses, some had tablecloths, and some had handbags. He was given a patch to sell on. He could travel from such a town to that town, either by walking or by bus, but he couldn't sell on the street from a pitch, and he couldn't work the beaches. Those places were reserved. He had to return what he didn't sell every night, along with the money. If it was wrong, or under what they wanted, huh, then he would be penalised. If he ever thought about running away, then he would be found, and he would never go anywhere ever again. Even if he wanted to go, he couldn't, because they'd taken his passport. He felt trapped. <sighs> but he was in Europe now. He had to make the most of it. His boss wasn't nice, but his boss had a boss too, and that boss had a boss, and so on and so forth. He felt very small and very lonely. He missed his family, but he had to try. He had to try for them. The summer was okay. The holidaymakers, as they were known as, were nice people on the whole. They used to call him Looky Looky. But he didn't mind at all. They bought from him. Some got a bargain, and others paid a high price for his goods. But they paid willingly, and everyone had had a laugh. He'd put a little stash away, and the rest he would give to his boss. He knew what he was expected to pay for each item, and that's what he gave. 
Anything over the top was his and it went in his pocket. He'd even been able to send some money home. They'd been so proud of him. He worked day and night. The tourists or holiday makers were always out. Some of the bars wouldn't let him in, but some would. Most of the bar owners were called expats or foreigners and spoke English. Some were not so nice, but others would give him a cold drink on a hot day and not expect any money. Yes, most of them were kind. The winter was different. Life got very hard. There were very few tourists and there was very little money. The locals, the bars, the restaurants, the pubs, also had less money. And so did he. Not that he had had a lot to start with. It had been raining for days and all the roads were flooded. He hadn't eaten for over 48 hours and his stomach hurt him. So did his feet. He was wet through and needed to sit down before he fell down. He passed a bar full of people and saw loads of cars outside. He knew this bar. The owner never chased him away. He went inside. Nobody paid any attention to him. It was warm and the people were laughing and cheering and he could smell food. They were playing pool. It looked like a competition. There was an empty chair in the corner by the fire. He gingerly sat down and put his products on the table. The bar owner spotted him and thought he looked absolutely knackered, so decided just to let him be. Mufasa spotted a girl he knew. She always bought from him and she spoke the local language too, unlike many of the foreigners. He motioned to his goods on the table and she sadly shook her head. She came over and sat down next to him. I'd love to buy something, she said, but I don't have any money. I hope my boyfriend wins this pool competition or we've got no food for next week. Have you eaten? she asked him. Mufasa shook his head. Stay there, the girl said. She returned with a plate of food for him. The food's free for pool players and supporters. You can have my share as I'm not hungry. He smiled at her and thanked her. The food was rice with a spicy meat and some beans. It tasted so good and he couldn't savour it. It was gone quickly. He saw a pile of empty plates and moved to put his empty plate on the top. The bar owner spotted him and pointed to the pot of food. He raised his eyebrows in a question. Can I have another plate? The bar owner nodded at him. Not everyone would eat and there was plenty left and plenty to go round. There are thousands like Mufasa who come to Europe looking for a better life and believe they'll find it. When they arrive, they soon see that the grass isn't always greener and the life that they've left is often much better. Many long to return, but find it hard because they've become trapped. Some even believe they can't go home as they think they'd be seen as a failure by their families, but that is very rarely the case. It's just in their head. Home is always there and home always awaits.